All right, welcome everyone to today's episode of Is a Prophecy here on Israel National Radio on Root Sheva. The show is syndicated as Messiah Hour on YouTube. You can go to the YouTube channel, Messiah Hour, subscribe to that, check out all our videos, and you can email me, messiahhourgmail.com. Our guest this afternoon is the president, founder, a teacher. She kind of does everything at Inspire Studio. Welcome to the program, Ellie Sheva Silver. Ellie Sheva, how are you doing out there? I'm great, thanks, Ari. How are you doing? Excellent. Now, Katie, a lot of times I see that your name, you go by Ellie Sheva Silver as opposed to Katie Silver. Can you tell us a bit about that? Sure. Um, I actually go by both names. You can choose whichever you feel more comfortable with. Um, my names were both given me, to me by my parents when I was a baby. Uh, one's my Jewish name, one's my English name. And uh, I usually go by Ellie Sheva in Israel, but a lot of friends still call me Katie. So whichever you want is good. <laughs> okay, great. I want to start first with uh, the goal of the open house. What are you trying to do this Thursday night? Obviously, you want to do promotion, get people to know about it. But what's going to happen in particular on Thursday night? Sure. Um, so Thursday, we're kicking off at 7.30. Um, there'll be drinks and healthy snacks, obviously, to go uh, with the yoga studio. And there'll be a yoga demonstration, some acro yoga. It's kind of like acrobatics, um, people climbing on top of each other. It's amazing if you've not seen it before. Um, we're going to have some live music, and everyone who comes in the door will get vouchers for classes at the studio. And we're having a raffle and giving away free Pilates classes, free yoga classes, acupuncture, va- and massage vouchers. Um, and then we have a DJ, female DJ, kicking off the night. And uh, just come, enjoy, mingle, and get to know the teachers and other people who love yoga from the city. Okay, and this, is it just for women or is it mixed, this Thursday night event? No, it's a mixed event. It's interesting you ask that because my studio up until now has actually been, um, it was under a different name and it was for ladies only. And I've decided to branch out and I've brought in a bunch more teachers. We're going to be a staff of 14. And a lot of classes are now co-ed or just ladies only or men only. So um, really branching out and men are welcome to this Thursday night. Okay, now there's a fast day this Thursday. It's the 10th of Tevet. So... Would you advise people to drink a lot of water before they come just to make sure they'll be refreshed? I mean, actually, after the fast, of course. <laughs> I definitely would. And they can also drink water in the studio if they like as well. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. So, yeah, some people, they don't like drinks in their studio, but you don't mind that? No, I don't mind. Just this once. All right. Very nice. Uh, now, also, you posted something interesting on your Facebook talking about how yoga is growing in Israel. Mm-hmm. And talk a bit about that, how you see that, and why you think that. Okay, um, so from what I've seen, uh, I went to India three years ago, and I was there for five months, and um, I met a ton of Israelis. It seems to be a big fashion for Israelis to go to India after the army, um, or generally to get away from life that can be stressful sometimes here. India is the complete opposite. It's just a total chill out, time to relax, uh, no rush. Everybody's like in a good mood, and um, and yoga is very popular in India, so I think a lot of Israelis get into into yoga on their India trip. Um, there's a big spiritual element to yoga. Um, there's time spent on the mat, breathing with your eyes closed. Uh, most classes end with a 10-minute relaxation or a guided meditation. So it's really a time to go in to yourself and, um, and kind of tune out of whatever's going on if there's something stressful happening. So for that reason, I think um, yoga is popular amongst Israelis. And yoga is growing worldwide. It's, it's, I mean, it's been in the West for a while, and people do live very stressful lives. We're surrounded by technology and always being um, – <laughs> our phone's always going. There's always Facebook or WhatsApp or something alerting us, and it's really hard to switch off for a few minutes. And uh, I think people are really drawn to the idea of, of focusing in on themselves and, and listening to their breath and breathing and stretching. Um, and the them who are coming uh, – they also love yoga, and they seem to be looking for it, and there's not much in English. So the studio should be a good place for anglers to find yoga classes as well. Now, I myself have done yoga. I like it a lot. And sometimes people, my guy friends, will make fun of me. They say it's a <laughs> women's exercise. I'm like, bro, you try to do it. <laughs> you tell me if it's a women's exercise. You know what I mean by that. But explain why yeah. it's a very tough exercise and people should not disrespect or take it lightly. Sure. Okay. Um so I've heard the same thing about Pilates. Men often laugh at Pilates, and they think it's like a it's like ballet or it's like a women's sport. But actually, it's really intense work. It's very focused work. Um, when you're working correctly, your movements can be much smaller, and you're working the joint to its full range and the muscle to its full capacity. And sometimes when I'm in the gym and watching these big guys lifting huge weights, their alignment's completely wrong. They're using the wrong muscle groups to achieve just the result that they're looking for. Um, so yoga is about focusing, working correctly, and being aware of your movements and not just 
you know, um, sloppily, like, trying to reach a certain position or lift a certain weight. Okay, this is is a Protestant Israel National Radio. My guest this afternoon is Katie Silver, and talk about how you personally got into yoga because you know you're you're a Jew, and there are a lot of Jews that, do, that are involved with yoga. But I'm curious if uh, since they're looking for a spiritual element, if that's why you got into yoga, you were looking for something spiritual as well. That's a very personal question. <laughs> um, but hey, this is Israel, so I guess that's the norm. There you go. Um, so I'm actually not a yoga teacher yet. I may end up doing yoga training. Um, but my background is in dance. So in England, I trained as a dancer for four years professionally, um, studied ballet, tap, jazz, modern, and did a lot of street dance and hip-hop dance on the side. And I used to teach dance in England. I had a dance school for ladies in the Jewish community. And then after a while, I started to get into Pilates, and I found that it's such a fantastic form of exercise. It completely realigns your whole body. Um, it transforms the look of the body and the feel of the body and can re- rehabilitate a lot of injury. So I studied to be a Pilates instructor for a year and a half and then I brought those skills to Israel and I opened my Pilates studio. And, um, and I've, I've dabbled in yoga here and there. In India, I did quite a lot of yoga and I have friends who are yoga teachers. And I realized that it's something that people love and I'm learning to love it myself and doing more and more classes, especially since the opening of the studio. Um, and yeah, that's that's basically the story of uh, me and yoga. <laughs> so it sounds like it was more of a medical thing than, than anything else, like for the physical body. Because some people, they are particularly looking for something spiritual, but with you it sounds more medical. Um, yeah, I would say it's a bit of both. So when I was in England training in dance and Pilates, it was always very mechanical. It was about the body. It was a lot of anatomy study. Um, I don't recall any spiritual element of training in my Pilates course. But when I came to India, there is a lot of talk of spirituality, and I did spend time in an ashram, um, which is like a, like a, I guess it's like a spiritual college in India, um, where you're woken up very early at 5 a.m. to do meditation and uh, breathing exercises and yoga classes. And it really is amazing. There, there were certain breathing exercises. Um, if you're into yoga, you'll know about these, where you cover one nostril and you breathe through one side, and then you're passing air from side to side. And they say that it balances the brain. So every morning after we'd done our breathing exercises, I felt really focused. I'm usually extremely ADD and all over the place, and my brain was really focused, and I was able to pay attention, to concentrate, and to notice more things around me than usual. So, um, yeah, I I started to really take an interest in meditation and in how the breath and the movement affects your mind. Now, I know I've been asking you some personal questions, but like you said, this is Israel. I mean, this is a place where a Shabbat table asks you how much money you make and, you know, that kind of sure. stuff. They get real personal. You're going to on the radio? <laughs> not, not about the money. Um, but I do want to bring this up because I do like doing yoga, and I want to feel guilt-free about doing it. So I want to talk yeah. about the quote-unquote, you know, Bodhisattva aspect because a lot of yeah. Jews say you can't do yoga, and you were just talking about you were part of a spiritual retreat. So mm-hmm. talk about how that's uh, okay according to Judaism, okay, according to the Torah. Okay, cool. Um, So originally, I think a lot of people don't realize this, um, the yoga positions, the asanas, they're called, um, were invented to um, ensure that people could sit a long time in meditation pose. So if you were to have a desk job and suddenly sit down on the ground and try and meditate for half an hour, your mind would be constantly bothered by the fact that your legs were aching or your back was stiff or your neck was hurting. Um, so these ancient yoga masters, they knew this, and they realized that in order for people to really be able to focus in when they're meditating for long periods of time, their body has to be fit and healthy. Um, so one of those, the ways of getting the body into that um, physical state is to practice yoga. And these poses were put together to lengthen and strengthen the body and to make it capable of holding a meditation pose for a while. And there are many other elements like diet and other things like that, um, but I won't go into those on the show. Um, and it's interesting because you'll often see in like in the Jewish community and, and in a Jewish life, there's um, there's a lot of time spent learning or sitting, having to focus, uh, time spent in the base midrash or time spent davening, where it really is hard for the body, like cause the body slouched over books all day long. And I, I actually think that it's very important that the body is healthy in order to have a healthy mind. Um, there have been many studies done on on how the brain works. If somebody exercises physically before they start to use the brain, the blood flow is better, the results are better, uh, the person's more alert, more awake. Um, children produce better exam results when they're exercising more as well. So these ancient yoga masters knew what they were doing. So from that side of things, the physical poses themselves, there's no element of, um, of a vodazora, as you call it. Um, sometimes 
there are environments where um, some Hindu philosophy is brought into to yoga classes. For example, people will chant at the beginning of class, um, and they be, may be chanting names of Hindu gods or whatever. Um, certain ashrams or yoga studios may have, like, giant um, Indian god statues in the room, and obviously that's not kosher. Um, but we won't see any of that in my studio at all. Um, I have friends, it's interesting, who who are very into yoga and they're religious, and they've taken yoga classes all around. And to get out of the problem of saying certain phrases, they, they'll say their own thing in their mind. So, for example, a lot of classes start with Om. Everybody will chant together Om. And I've heard friends say instead they'll say Shalom. <laughs> so they found their own unique ways of getting around the, the spiritual aspect. And uh, the co-ed aspect, talk about that because some people might say uh, that's not sneo, that's not a kosher way, etc. How, how would you explain that? Sure. Um, so personally, I teach ladies-only classes. I'm from, I'm religious, and um, I will teach men often in a pair with their wife. I have couples who come to me, or I'll teach a, a man alone. I don't demonstrate when I teach in Pilates. The cues are all verbal, so I can sit on a chair, I can wear a skirt as I teach. Um, and there are other classes at the studio, and it's for each teacher to decide for themselves what they're comfortable with. So as I said, there are men-only classes, there are ladies-only classes, and there are covered lessons. And everybody should feel comfortable to go to the lesson that they want. I don't want to police anybody. It's like as a studio owner, I'm offering um, various different forms of classes and I want everybody to feel comfortable. But as I said, I'm not policing it, that I'm only having ladies classes or men's classes. Um, because the challenge is to get men into classes in a group of men for some reason is very difficult. It's been tried and uh, men seem very hesitant to exercising in groups alone. Hmm. And is part of your idea behind doing this is kind of establish more of a yoga community because you have a lot of people that do yoga, but they might feel there are only a few of them. Or there's not that many. Is, is part of this idea to get people together? Totally, 100%. Yeah, exactly what you just said. Um, there are many yoga teachers. Often they're teaching from home or in the park. It's very hard to find space to teach in Jerusalem. As you know, Jerusalem's like packed out and um, finding large enough space for studios is really hard. Uh, I know myself, when I first came to Israel and tried to open classes, people were asking really high rent on these fancy studios and gyms, and it's just not feasible as a teacher to try and build a class when you're paying 200 shekels for a uh, space. Um, so my idea with the project, it's, it's like a co-op. I brought together 14 of the best teachers I could find. And we're working as a team to build a community where there's classes under one roof, and students can buy a membership, and they have access to all the classes under their uh, membership. And... Um, as well as there being just classes at the studio, there's some fun community activities. So occasionally we'll be having parties. Um, we want to put on movie nights, showing movies about uh, yoga, the history of yoga, and how yoga's growing and developing in the West. Um, I intend to do Shabbat meals and to invite students from the studio. So you can really say it would be a place to meet others, um, maybe to find your shidduch. <laughs> and uh, great for Olim to come and meet Israelis and other Olim here too. Do you also find it interesting, is there any, you happen to know if there was any mention in uh, our Jewish Bible of, of yoga because they say that martial arts was one of the gifts that Abraham Abinu gave his sons uh, after Yitzhak, the one with the sons with Keturah. I'm just uh, curious if there's any mention Jewish source-wise about yoga. You know what, I don't know. I've never heard anything about it before, but I'd be very curious that if anyone out there does have a source. I'd be really interested if you could get in touch and, um, and let me know. Yeah, because the gifts, some say, are meditation and martial arts, and medita mm -hmm. yoga is a form of meditation, so I was uh, curious about that. Again, this is Is It Prophecy on Israel National Radio. Arut Sheva, the show is syndicated as Messiah Hour on YouTube. You can go to YouTube, type in Messiah Hour with Ari Lewis, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Check out some of our previous episodes, and you can email me at messiahhour at gmail.com. Again, our guest this afternoon is Katie Silver. So, Katie, tell us also with Jer – Jerusalem and Israel is such a physical place. There's, you, know, you have to walk most places. It's very difficult mm -hmm. to have a car. So talk about how yoga can, can help with just daily life. Sure. Um, so I'd say yoga and Pilates, they really work on aligning the body and teaching you how to use your muscles correctly. Um, so by practicing yoga, you're training the body in how to bend safely, how to stand, how to walk. Um, how to carry bags, and some of the teachers are um, are medically trained, and they are they're called yoga therapists. It's a little bit like being a physiotherapist with um, with a yoga basis, and they they'll be doing special workshops. For example, this Friday, uh, this last Friday gone by, we had a class with uh, one of the teachers, Ingrid Aria, and uh, Ingrid's a yoga therapist, and she did a class on how to release neck and shoulder tension, 
and she explained to people how to hold the neck properly. And she talked about how to hold your bags. Um, so it's learning like everyday skills for the body to be healthier in your everyday activities. Mm. And also, you were talking about personally, you noticed that when you do it, uh, you would uh, focus better. And do you expect that for most people they, to see those type of benefits where they can think better, concentrate better, do their jobs better, all that kind of stuff? Yeah, I definitely, I think it takes um, a little bit of patience, which is maybe the thing that we're all lacking, and that's the whole point in yoga, so it's kind of ironic. Um, but a bit of patience just to give it time to work. So you may not see a result after one class um, or two, but after a few, definitely, you should start to see changes in the body and uh, noticing you're able to breathe better. For example, most of us don't use um, our lung capacity very well. So we'll breathe it very shallowly into the shoulder area, into the neck and the chest. That's very tense breathing, and it signals to the nervous system that we're, um, that we're anxious. So um, if we learn to breathe more correctly, like into the lower back, into the back of the ribs, into the stomach, it automatically calms the nervous system. So if you can imagine for an hour and a half, if you're practicing once or twice a week, and you're constantly breathing slowly and deeply through the whole class, Hopefully that will be carried into the rest of your week. Your breath will be slower. You'll feel calmer. Um, and I've noticed for myself when I spent time in India and I did a lot of meditation that um, you find a certain place inside yourself or inside your mind that I guess spiritually you'd call it like your soul, um, getting in touch with the soul, where you feel like very tranquil. So often you can feel yourself getting annoyed, especially in Israel, always yelling at somebody on the bus or the other day I was on the phone to hot, having an argument with somebody who works there, and I could feel my blood boiling and my temperature rising and getting very frustrated. And I tried to remember that quiet space, and I was able to calm myself down a little bit. So um, yoga is really, like, tremendously helpful with um, with people who suffer from depression, anxiety, the meditational aspect of it. It works wonders, and a lot of therapists are actually sending clients to go and do yoga rather than to be put on prescription medicine. Um, and while I'm on the, the topic of meditation, we actually have classes on a Monday and a Wednesday evening that are donation-based, so um, people shouldn't feel like if they can't afford, they, they you know, um, it's not an elitist thing to be able to come to the studio. Uh, the, the Monday and Wednesday class is donation-based. It's a meditation class. We have four different teachers covering that, and um, it's like an open group. Every week you can come, uh, the teacher will explain the basics of meditation. You'll get to practice for a while, and then there'll be time for questions and answers. And we serve tea and, and refreshments. Um, so we welcome people Mondays and Wednesdays at 9.15 p.m. Uh, and is that co-ed or is that just for women? Yeah, that's co-ed. Oh, okay. Very nice. Now, I would also like to say, or I guess my question is, with you personally doing yoga, did you notice it getting easier the more you do it? Do you look at it as, because most people, they go to the gym, like, oh, i got to work out today. And I can, I can sense <laughs> a general like, passion. I want to know if it was always like that for you. Um, sorry, just can you repeat the question? Did I find that it got easier? Yeah, and also that it turned from maybe something you didn't like, if you didn't like it, to something that you looked at as, mm. I'm looking forward to this today. Okay. Um, so for me, it's hard to answer that question. I was, um, from the age of 16, I was in full-time dance training, and my body's just used to being pushed to the limit, and I think I've always been in shape. Maybe I've had the odd blip here and there when I've got lazy. Um so, yeah, there are certain poses that are challenging, but I enjoy the challenge, and I think you build a lot of skill. Um, the mind over matter skill is really important. So if you're holding a pose and it's difficult and you're struggling, it's you that's ruling over your body, not your body ruling over you. So that's a really interesting um, skill to take into the rest of your life with you, and I learned that in dance school. And I think anyone who's been in the army could probably say that I think there's an army expression, Hakol Barosh, everything is in the head. It's like if you believe you can do something, you can do it. Um I have seen from my clients, though, that, yeah, people really struggle at first. They're shaking or <laughs> they're sweating or they give up halfway through an exercise. But if they're patient, sometimes by the end of five or six weeks of practicing, they're wondering what was so difficult. And they're like, this is so easy. I don't understand. Yeah. You know, the body really adjusts. It, the muscles rebuild. Um, every time you're working a muscle, it breaks itself and it builds a little bit stronger. So, um, yeah, it definitely gets easier as you go along. And sometimes if you have an inspiring teacher or there's other people in the class who are super flexible or super strong, that can be a really good inspiration to know that you will get there if you practice. All right. And uh, last question for you. Again, tell everybody listening, uh, Facebook group, or, or what, where should they go to find out more about uh, your studio and about the event on Thursday? Cool. Um, so I have a website. It's um, inspirejerusalem.com. That's I-N-S-P-I-R-E, Jerusalem, one word, dot com. 
Um, you can see a bio of all our teachers. You can read about the development of the studio. You can see pictures of the studio. And uh, you can book online and see our timetable. And then we also have Facebook groups. There's Inspired. And there's an event listing um, for this Thursday night. It should be on the Facebook page. Or you can email me, in, uh, info at Inspired Jerusalem, and I'll be happy to send information out. Okay, great stuff. Uh, Katie, thanks for your time, and good luck for good luck with the studio. hope it's a lot of success. And you can also uh, contact me if you have any questions about it, messiahhourgmail.com. Uh, we're going to take a break right now. On the other side, we'll have my thoughts on the Parsha of the Week. This is Is a Prophecy on Israel National Radio, Arut Sheva, and the show is syndicated as Messiah Hour on YouTube. Any questions, comments, concerns, or complaints, it is a Jewish country. Email me, messiahhour, at, at gmail.com. We'll be right back right after this.